Today I'll be showing you a commission piece that I had, Kit Kat, a cute little torty. And here are the materials I used for the drawing. Uh, various different types of colored pencils, as well as electric eraser, drafting pencil, kneaded eraser. And I also used the Arches Hot Press watercolor paper. The normal time lapse was actually a half hour, and so I really had to expedite it um, even more so because I think that would have been a little too long to watch. So here I'm starting with the eyes. I go in with the black, usually create that outline. I'll also use a sepia from the polychromos and create that outline as well as the people. You can see here I'm going in with some greens, uh, yellows, and I think even a little bit of blue to kind of make that eye pop. Its left eye is much darker than its right eye, so you can see I'm going in with darker greens, even a little bit of brown. And then moving right into the ears, there's some flesh pink in the skin of the ear, a little bit of ochre yellow, and also sepia, black again. Sepia is probably one of my favorite colors to use. Um, I use the Polychromos sepia, it is an excellent color to use as a base for all your darks in a lot of the animals that I draw. In fact, the Polychromos are probably my main workhorse color pencils that I use in most of my color pencil drawings. I really do love the Pablos and the Luminance from the Caran d'Ache because they are so blendy and creamy. They have a wonderful texture. But again, those Polychromos are gonna be my main workhorse here. I think to me, ears are rather complex because you have those little long hairs that are dark and they're kind of going across the ear and you have to like get that light flesh behind them to, to stand out. And I find it can be a bit tedious to do ears. So I always feel like I'm still learning a lot with every ear that I draw. Torty fur can be a bit random in their markings, which can bring on a really good challenge when you're drawing a torty cat. I think the trick here is to go in light. Go in with your sepias where the black fur is. Go in with some yellow ochres where the burnt siennas are and the, also the darker fur markings are. And go in with super duper light layers and then just build up and build up those layers little by little so you don't get these muddy colors on your paper. Going in with light layers of pigment also helps you map out a little bit more clearly where those light and dark markings are on the fur without having to fully commit when you put on some heavy pigments on right away. Also, good layering is super important. That's where the life of the fur, the texture, the depth really starts to pop out. If you go in with heavy, solid layers right away, it makes it look flat, especially with blacks. Um, I always feel like I want to add sepia, maybe even some blues and purples when I do black, so you can give it a little bit more of life.
When you're doing color pencil, you are going to add your lights in first and then your darks on top. If you paint, you usually do the opposite. So with color pencil, lights first, darks last. Normally, not always, but for the most part, that is the golden rule with color pencils. Domestic cats' noses are fairly small and it's always interesting to draw a domestic cat versus a big cat like a tiger or something because you'll notice the noses are completely different. But with Kit Kat's nose here, the markings on her nose are just as apparent as they are in the fur. So make sure to draw in all those markings that you see and not what you think you see. Also super important when you're doing color pencils, as I'm sure with any medium, is that the pencil strokes are going in the direction of the fur. That is super duper important, and that gets pretty darn complex around the face, especially around the nose and eyes, as that fur changes patterns quite quickly. Also, another super important thing is that you want your pencil strokes to reflect the length of the fur. Meaning, if you have short fur, you want to use short pencil strokes in that particular area. As you get to other areas of the body that have longer fur, the pencil strokes will be much longer to reflect that length of fur. This is super duper important and really will reflect in your finished product. So again, I am starting with the lights first and then going in with the darks. I'll start with the yellow ochre just to kind of map out where those light bits of fur are in its body. And then I'll go in with the sepias and the blacks and go around that, add that layering in. So Kit Kat's body is a lot more in shadow than her face. You'll notice with her face, I use a lot more cold grays to accentuate the different portions of her face, like her cheek versus her muzzle versus her nose versus the forehead. And that's gonna create a little bit more dimension in the face. But the body gets a little bit more simple. It's a little bit more easy. Before I go into any new section of the drawing here, I'll go over with my electric eraser to clean up that area, make sure any little bits of debris that kind of gets stuck to it from my hand usually gets cleaned up and cleared away. And then that will help make the pigments even that much more rich and colorful. Now we're moving into the chest area, which is white. And I'm marking that out with white, but I'm also really marking it out with cold and warm grays to really get a sense of shadow in the chest versus like dark fur. So don't be scared to use some cold or warm grays from the polychromos or whatever particular color pencil you have. I really enjoy the electric eraser. It helps me get details that I wouldn't be able to get from a kneaded eraser or a thick eraser. A lot of people also like to use the Tombow Mono Zero eraser, which also is great for accentuating that fur and hair. I'll also use the Mono Zero eraser as well, but I feel like the electric eraser can go a little bit deeper with removing a little bit more. So I think this comes down to personal preference. I like to use both, but I use the electric eraser a little bit more. And they're pretty inexpensive on Amazon.
There are definitely a few ways you can do whiskers. This is just one of the ways that I do. I think a more complex way that other people may do is drawing around the whiskers and that can make the fur around it look a little bit tight and a lot less fluid. And so I prefer to go in with the electric eraser and remove that pigment. A great way to draw white whiskers on white paper is to use a light gray. It looks completely fine and really fabulous, honestly, and it still indicates that those whiskers are white. Here I'm drawing the cat bed in with the portrait, and that's an important one because it helps ground down the kitty that I've drawn and that makes the picture look a lot more complete. When I'm drawing fabrics as opposed to fur or even skin tones, I'll usually leave it unburnished. This unburnished look will actually give it a better texture of fabric than say like if I was doing a skin tone or fur, I would go in with heavier pigments to create that burnished look. All right guys, thanks so much for joining me. Here is a finished Kit Kat. I hope you've enjoyed. Subscribe and like, and I'll see you next time.